With the single exception of oligonucleotide phosphoramidite chemistry, the manipulation of DNAs always involves some biologically derived component such as a restriction enzyme, or in many cases something more complex like a complete cell or virus particle. Because it is often very expensive to purify biochemical components for such procedures, using cells to do common DNA manipulation processes is often a good strategy for performing many operations in parallel using robots. One very popular cloning method today is yeast recombination. If you construct linear double-stranded DNAs that overlap at their ends, then introduce them into S. cerevisiae by transformation, the DNA repair machinery of the cell will join the DNAs together into larger molecules. This reaction is the basis for the Venter approach to genome engineering. Many strategies, however, exist, including the use of cell lysates and more complex engineered processes. In this study, Elegy and co-workers construct strains of E. coli and specialized plasmids that enable the transfer of gene cassettes from one plasmid backbone to another. There are several genetic components introduced in their system, and many of these components are used in diverse settings. First is the R6K peer or conditional origin of replication. R6K is the origin of replication. E. coli is not able to replicate plasmids containing this origin, but if the cell contains the peer gene, it can be transformed by such plasmids. Peer encodes the protein pi, which binds to short repetitive sequences within R6K called iterons, and these result in initiation of replication. The value of this system is that it is very strict. Without peer, there is no detectable replication of R6K plasmids, but with it, the plasmids can be replicated very stably. Additionally, strains such as the dial strains have been developed that allow you to tune the concentration of peer in the cell and thus ramp up or down the copy number of the plasmid. The second component is Vs negative selection. Vs encodes a mutant of the phenylalanyl tRNA synthetase. This mutant has relaxed substrate specificity and will accept the unnatural amino acid perichlorophenylalanine. If you express this enzyme in the cell under normal growth conditions, nothing happens. It will continue to charge phenylalanine onto tRNAs and no phenotype is altered. However, if you feed Vs cells perichlorophy, it will charge the unnatural amino acid onto Phi tRNAs and it will get incorporated into proteins. Even a small amount of misincorporation like this will result in cell death, so this gene provides a conditional negative selection. You can selectively kill cells that express Vs while preserving wild type by growing mixtures of the cells on the unnatural amino acid. The third component is the ISC1 homing endonuclease. This is basically a restriction enzyme, but it recognizes a very long and specific sequence. The recognition is sufficiently long and specific that such sites are unique within E. coli. Thus, any DNA that contains this sequence can be specifically cleaved without affecting the viability of the cell. The fourth component is lambda-red recombination. We've seen this system before in the context of MAGE. The device is composed of three genes, XO, beta, and GAM. When a double-stranded linear DNA is introduced into cells encoding lambda-red, it is highly recombinogenic. The exo function degrades one strand, resulting in a single-stranded DNA. Beta binds to the single-stranded DNA, while GAM modifies normal DNA repair processes. The specifics of the mechanism are not all worked out, but this protein DNA complex infiltrates the replication fork, incorporating the DNA into homologous sequences. Lambda-red is the method of choice for creating genome knock-ins and knockouts in E. coli and many other bacteria. The last atypical component is F-plasmid conjugation. We discussed F-plasmid earlier in the context of biofilm formation, but the more basic function of F-plasmid is the transfer of itself from a donor cell to a recipient cell via a pilus. A common trick in these in vivo DNA manipulation systems is to employ a genomically encoded F-plasmid whose origin of transfer has been deleted. The origin of transfer is the site where the conjugation machinery initiates rolling circle amplification and transfer of the DNA. When you knock it out of the F-plasmid genome, the F-plasmid is no longer able to transfer. However, if you restore that origin to the system by placing it on another plasmid, that other plasmid will get transferred instead. In their study, they put all these components together in a creative way. There are two engineered plasmids in the system. Donor strain A has the donor vector, which contains the conditional R6K origin, a canamycin resistance gene, 
the F-plasmid origin of transfer, and an arbitrarily chosen gene cassette flanked by ISC1 restriction sites. The goal is to transfer that arbitrary gene cassette into a recipient vector which is housed in strain B. That recipient vector has a normal Coli-1 origin, an ampicillin resistance marker, and a Phi-S negative selection marker similarly flanked by ISC1 sites. Both strains are stable. The Coli-1 origin in strain B is sufficient, so as long as you don't add perichlorophy and kill the cells, they're viable and stable. The strain A cells similarly are stable because they encode the peer gene in their genome. However, when you mix the two cells, magic happens. Strain A contains the F plasmid genes, and the plasmid contains the origin of transfer or ET. Thus, they are F prime cells and produce F pillus and will try to transfer the donor vector to F minus cells like strain B. Thus, mixing of the cells results in the transfer of the donor vector into strain B, resulting in a strain B with two plasmids. This gets to an intermediary state containing both plasmids in strain B. Strain B also encodes the ISC1 gene under a PBAD promoter. Thus, addition of arabinose turns on the restriction enzyme, resulting in cleavage of the two plasmids to generate double-stranded linear DNAs. Since these cells also encode the lambda-red genes, these plasmids are highly recombinogenic towards each other and will recombine. Note that strain B lacks the peer gene, and thus an R6K origin plasmid will not replicate. Outgrowing these cells will therefore eliminate any donor vectors. By growing the cells in the presence of perichlorophy, any plasmids that still contain Phi-S will be eliminated. The result of these selections is that only the recombined plasmid in which Phi-S has been displaced by the arbitrary gene cassette will survive. To recap, their system is composed of two engineered E. coli strains and two specialized vectors. It also contains a DNA transfer device, a conditional replication system, a recombination device, and various selections. When you mix the two strains, F plasmid transfers the donor plasmid, but the plasmid is unable to replicate in the recipient host. The homing endonuclease cleaves the DNAs, releasing the fragments, and lambda red recombines them. Finally, selections allow only the recombined plasmids to survive. Thus, experimentally, you only need to mix the cells and then grow them in some chemicals to functionally transfer the gene cassettes into a new vector context. Indeed, this technology turns out to work fairly well and has been used successfully in automated high-throughput experiments.